Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to go over the 2020 limited edition Squire Bullet Telecaster. Now we've talked about this before, uh, but not for very good reasons. I've had a lot of issues with this guitar, and it's led to a lot of my guitar tech videos because we had to fix so many things on it. I figured I've got so many guitars back behind me, I don't know if you can see those, but um, I might as well go over them with you. This is going to be the first part in a series of all the Squires that I own. Um, and I own several, so this will be the first one. Um, right off the bat, though, you might notice the audio quality is a little bit better. I actually brought my microphone in from my garage where I usually do my music videos and figured, why not use the microphone for these? Um, that way, you can hear my voice so much more clearly. I'm just kidding. I think it will help, though. Anyway, let's get started. So... This guitar is the cheapest Telecaster that you can buy new, and from what I understand, it's pretty much unchanged uh, today, so in 2022. It's pretty much unchanged from 2020. Now, this is limited edition. Um, there are a couple things about it that might make it limited edition, which we'll go over, but mostly it's the color. I think this is a uh, Daphne Blue, might be what they call this. So, this guitar is a low-end cheap it's it's one of the cheapest guitars that Squire makes in fact um of any model really i think it's a little bit more expensive than the bullet mustang which i love and is a better guitar spoil alert um this guitar is only one and a half inches thick a real telecaster um, or a classic vibe or something a little nicer i think even the affinities now are going to be 1.75 inches so you do lose a quarter inch of body uh with this guitar that's normal. Um, most of the non-standard Squires are thinner. The Mustang is thinner. The Bullet Strat is thinner, noticeably thinner. And the Affinity Strats used to be thinner. They're actually full size now, so that's nice. I'd like to get my hands on one of those. Um, so it is thinner. Um, if we look at the back, you can see that it is, in fact, a string-through body. Now, there's a lot of debate about this about whether it matters, whether it's a top-loading bridge or a string-through body on something like a Telecaster, um, or the hardtail top-loading Strat versus the string-through hardtail Strat. Um, from what I can tell and from my experience, it appears that the top-loading one is a little easier to play because the string tension isn't going to be as uh, as high, right? Because if it's terminating here, then you don't have to deal with the extra tension going through the body. So... Uh, it is also a little bit brighter, though, with the string through, but just barely so. Like, to the point where you could turn your knob, you know, a millimeter on your amp to compensate for the change in tone. I don't think it makes that much of a difference. For me, I like the string through, simply because in my brain, it feels like I'm hearing the tone wood, um, which you really can't. But, you know, half of it is mental. Half of it is how you feel, and it feels nice when you think you're, you feel your body, your guitar, you know, reverberating around as you play. It's a nice feeling. Um, speaking of wood, so I'm not sure what this is made of, but I think we might have a clue. So I got this guitar, a really good deal on it from Guitar Center because it fell off the truck, supposedly. So it was damaged. Um, the damage occurred right here. I'm going to actually try to put it up to the camera so you can look. So it looks like a lighter wood. Um, so I'm not sure what that is, but eh, it looks nice. Whatever it is, it's probably base wood or ba wood. I read somewhere that it's pronounced ba wood or bay wood, even though it's spelled base wood. What do I know? So if we move over to the hardware, you've got a bridge that has six saddles as opposed to the three saddles that come on most other Telecasters. Some people would prefer that. Um, because you've got a saddle for each string, so the strings don't slip around as much. Uh, compensated saddles will help with that on another style of Telecaster, but that's neither here nor there. Um, you've got your bridge pickup right here, mounted into this plate. Got your neck pickup right here, and I believe this is plastic. It doesn't feel like metal, it might be, but it feels like plastic. Not positive on that. And then you've got your knobs, you know, your standard Telecaster knobs, metal with a nice grip on the side. They turn pretty good. 
And you've got your barrel three-way switch. Feels nice and clicky. And you have a three-ply pick guard, which is kind of surprising on a guitar that's this cheap. I believe this was 189 It might be more now. I'm sure you've seen the price of new guitars has gone up quite a bit. But has a three-ply pick guard, and that might be part of what made this a special edition. Uh, my very favorite feature of this guitar, though, is the input jack. Now, that doesn't really affect your tone or playability or anything, but it's just really nice. It's recessed. Instead of having like a football jack is what I think it's called, the other style where it's just kind of surface level with the outside of the body of the guitar, this one's actually recessed. It feels more premium than it is, and it's just, it's really, really nice and satisfying to plug into. So I really like that. That's a nice feature. Now let's move on to the worst part of this guitar and what I like the least. The neck in general, the whole neck. We're going to start with the fingerboard. The fingerboard is horrendous on this guitar. Um, I would think that it was just bad quality control and I got a bad one. Um, but I have three of these that have Indian Laurel boards in the same price range, and they're all horrible. Um, this one in particular had a lot of glue, it looks like, which I'm not sure where that glue came from. It could be from when they were putting the frets in or something, um, or the inlays, but there was like specks of glue all over the fingerboard. I had to sand it off. That was really tedious. Um, the... Fingerboard itself also just doesn't feel very good. Like, it feels really rough. It doesn't feel anything like rosewood or maple or any other uh, fingerboard that I'm used to playing. So I sanded it as best as I could and got it playable. I still don't like it a whole lot, though. Um, and then you have the fret ends, which we did a whole video on. The fret ends are so sharp. I mean, you got to go crazy on this thing, sanding, to get it into a uh, playable shape where it's not going to hurt you. Um... The other thing is the frets are not installed properly. Uh, a lot of the frets weren't, they needed to be tapped with a mallet. Um, in fact, as, I, as I've owned this guitar, as time has gone on, some of them have started to raise. Uh, and I don't even play this instrument as often as I should. That could be why. Um, but I'll see if I can get it in frame here. So I'm going to hold this up so you can see how the frets were installed. So some of them are kind of floating a little bit, um, and that's not nice. That's part of what causes that sharpness. Really, the only way to fix that is to hammer it down uh, with a rubber mallet. Like I said, I need to take this back out there and do that. I might do a whole video on just that, because if that works, then that can solve a lot of problems for a lot of people. There's nothing worse than you're playing, and then you bend a string or something, and or you hit an open chord with an open E at the bottom, and it like gets stuck behind the fret. That sucks. Sounds awful, ruins your recording, ruins your performance, you could break a string. It's just bad news. Um, so, I will say the back of the neck, it it's nice. Um, it's not finished, really, and I like that. That satin finish feels really good. It's a lot easier to play this than it is with a glossy back. I do like glossy backs, though. Like I'm not partial to one or the other, where it's sanded or not sanded. I'm not going to be deterred from buying a guitar either way, but it is nice. It is a nice touch. Um, the skunk stripe also on this one is, you can feel it. It's raised, so it's not flush with the back of the neck. That's not great. And over time, as I've played it, it's oiled up a little bit from my hands, and uh, it feels pretty nice now. Moving on to the top of the guitar, you've got your nut, which I actually have no complaints with this nut. Um, for the most part, there actually was a major issue, and that may be more the tuners than the nut. But the G and D strings pinged really bad. Like, it's really hard to explain unless you've seen or heard this or experienced this yourself. But when the string was hit while it was open, it was kind of like a bung sound that was coming at the end of your note or the beginning of your note. It was horrible. It was like a, a bell made out of aluminum foil. It was just the best way I could describe it. Sounded absolutely horrible. Pinging constantly. So I went to my local shop and I bought a, an extra string tree that they had. And uh, I just installed it in the headstock. 
Um, it fixed the problem, but you shouldn't have to do that, you know. And that's either the nut or the tuners. Uh, the tuners are actually okay. I don't have much of a problem with them. They actually hold tune pretty well. This guitar doesn't really go out of tune. Um, now I did tighten up the nuts around the tuners, and I did tighten up the pegs a little bit. Um, but it works out pretty good. Um, last thing, I do like the headstock design. I like that it doesn't say bullet on it, and I think that the regular ones do say bullet. Uh, but this one just says, Squire, Telecaster. Very simple, very nice. So, we're not going to go through opening it up and looking at the pickups or looking at the pick guard because I can just tell you exactly what they are. So, these are routed, you can only put what's in here unless you get a wood router and route it out yourself. There's room for one of these and there's room for one of these. That's about it. Uh, you could take a wood router, like I said, if you really wanted to, to make it a Nashville or something. But uh, as far as modding, you're pretty much limited to one of these and one of these. Now, if you want to put something smaller in here, like a Strat neck or something crazy like that, you could do that if you wanted to. It would fit. But, um, yeah. I just wanted to add in this section right here that um, the pickups actually do sound really, really good. I love the way the bridge pickup sounds. Um, it sounds really nice. It's really spanky and really bitey and very trebly. It sounds great. The neck pickup, it sounds perfect. It's very mellow. It's very laid back. It's a little bit bass heavy, but that's kind of what you would expect. Um, don't know how I recorded that entire section without talking about the pickups, um, but I had to add this part in here. The pickups are really, really good. So, that's really all there is to say about this guitar. Um, how do I feel about it? Should you buy one? I don't think so. I really don't. I think you should save up a little bit more and get an Affinity. They're much, much, much nicer. Um, or get a Deluxe. Those are really cool. They have two humbuckers and they've got four knobs. Um, those are really nice guitars. I believe they have a 12-inch radius, too. Could be wrong. Um, otherwise, if you just want your classic Strat, uh, Telecaster, classic Telecaster, don't buy this one unless you can get a really good deal. If you're for like less than a hundred bucks and you don't own a uh, Telecaster, you should pick it up then. Fine, it's cheap. You can make it playable, but expect to do a lot of work. The older Squire Telecasters are better than this one. I've played several and I like them a lot better than this one. They just feel nicer in the hand. They don't have all of these issues that I've gone over here. Um, so like I said, Find one used, find a good price on one, can trade some gear you're not you're not using for one or something. Go ahead and pick it up. I think that it's a, a nice addition to your collection if you don't own a Telecaster. If you do own a Telecaster and it's not this one, it's probably better than this one. So that's all I got to say about this. Thank you very much. I really appreciate all of you. Please subscribe if you want to see more. And now we're going to roll the tape on an outro jam. Thank you.